God our Father, in the dying and rising of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought life and salvation out of cruelty and death. We mark victory in Japan in gratitude for the courage of the Allied forces and civilians who suffered for freedom in the Far East campaign and in sorrow for all that hinders the coming of your kingdom of peace. Give us wisdom to learn from the bitter memories of war and hearts that long for the unity of all nations. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, in whom there is no east or west, no north or south but one fellowship of love across the whole earth. Amen. Okay, are we all set? Okay, are we speeding? Everyone at speed? Okay, whenever you're ready, Jackie. 70 years ago, months after the celebrations in Europe over the German surrender, the Second World War raged on for the British Army of the Far East in Burma, Sri Lanka, India, Thailand, Malaysia, the Philippines and Singapore. I had no idea. I thought, I thought it was actually over. The British and Commonwealth campaign in the Far East was the longest of the Second World War and involved two and a half million troops. Yet yeah, these men are often overlooked. Their commander, Viscount Slim, famously said, When you go home, don't worry about what to tell your loved ones and friends about service in Asia. No one will know where you were or what it is you did. You are and will remain the Forgotten Army. Imagine this. <sighs> so around 300,000 soldiers in the Far East became prisoners of war. And 100,000... 100,000... 100,000 of these died as prisoners. Before seeing it end. Yeah, it's sad and it makes you, yeah. They suffered atrocious treatment in camps. With food severely rationed and disease rife. Torture and even execution were commonplace. Despite their weakened state, many were forced to construct the now infamous Death Railway. At a cost of more than 12,000 Allied lives, one man for every sleeper laid. Wow. It's crazy. Japan's surrender came in August 1945. Following the devastating use of the first atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that's, that's the one that we always see, the big atomic. Yeah. Back home in the UK, as victory was announced, thousands gathered in the rain to watch King George VI and the Queen drive down the mall in an open carriage. Buildings all over London were floodlit and throngs of people crowded the streets of every town and city to celebrate. Soldiers even formed a conga line down Regent Street. But those who fought and suffered in the Far East wouldn't arrive home until well after the victory celebrations were over. Many prisoners of war had to wait months for ships to bring them home. And some Allied troops wouldn't return to the UK for nearly two years after it was over. And they've already been there for God knows how many years. Seventy years later, we remember them all. And the Royal British Legion ensures the memory of their contribution lives on. Lives on. Lives on. Yes, that's what we want.
Japan has today surrendered. The last of our enemies is laid low. Here at home, you have a short rest from the unceasing exertions which you have all borne without flinching or complaint for so many dark years. We also think at this time especially of the prisoners in Japanese hands, of our friends in the dominions of Australia and New Zealand, in India, in Burma, and in those colonial territories about whom the brunt of the Japanese attack fell. We rejoice that their sufferings will soon be at an end, and that these territories will soon be purged of the Japanese invader. Peace has once again come to the world. Let us thank God for this great deliverance and his mercies. Long live the King. Japan is a historical as well as personal event to me. There were always conversations about the Japanese occupation in South China, Hong Kong, Malaya, and Singapore. My maternal grandfather was killed by bombs dropped in South China, and the trauma of his passing never left my mother. My father was resolved to be a medical doctor. From witnessing Singapore General Hospital's mortuary piled high with war dead, Churchill had referred to Singapore as an impregnable fortress, but it was bombed in the early hours of 8th December 1941. 
Chinatown bore the brunt, with thousands injured and almost hundreds of deaths, with bodies having to be laid outside the hospital's overfilled mortuary. The bombs missed my father's home in the hospital's grounds by hardly 500 yards, landing in the school next door. During the Japanese occupation, in 1942, my paternal grandfather, Dr. Benjamin Chu, was head of the medical unit in Tantoxing Hospital, working on penicillin, being trialled. He administered it first to Dr. Clarence Smith, who recovered from deadly pneumonia, to head the hospital. Alexander Fleming was awarded the Nobel Prize for penicillin that year. A great blessing against infection in the horrendous conditions of war. In strategic terms, Churchill's priorities were the defence of Britain, the Middle East and North Africa, and after June 1941, aid to the Soviet Union. Because of this, British Malaya, Borneo and Burma were sacrificed to the alarm of Australia and New Zealand. After the Japanese conquest of 1942, the priority was still beat Hitler first, and the Southeast Asia Command was a sideshow, secondary also to the US commands in the Pacific. It was because of this that Australia and New Zealand felt that Churchill had let them down again, and British Commonwealth forces also felt betrayed during and after the Malayan and Burmese campaigns. But such an extensive and grave war is bound to find the best of human effort wanting. In their darkest moments, had my family and everyone oppressed by the horror of war wondered when that nightmare would end? Had civilians, prisoners of war and the military still fighting, wondered where victory would come from? From the book of Amos, in the Bible, we read, Is not the day of the Lord darkness, and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Today, our freedom is the legacy of liberation, albeit very costly. It is also 75 years since the annihilation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. While the war was declared at an end on 15th August 1945, formal surrender was only signed on 2nd September in Tokyo by General MacArthur for the US forces. And on 12th September in Singapore by Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten. My father was among the family members invited to witness this signing in Singapore's Municipal Hall, now the City Hall, a stone's throw from Singapore's Anglican Cathedral, St Andrew's Cathedral. In the two-minute silence at 11 o'clock, may our hearts beat with thanksgiving. May we be renewed with resolve to be sincere in keeping peace. Let love rule our hearts. Christ Jesus is our peace, and in him the dividing wall of hostility is broken down. Amen. Let us pray with words from the hymn by Fred Kahn for the healing of the nations. Lord, we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords, 
to a life of love in action. Help us rise and pledge our word. Lead us forward into freedom, from despair your world release, that redeemed from war and hatred, all may come and go in peace. Show us how, through care and goodness, fear will die and hope increase. All that kills abundant living, let it from the earth be banned. Pride of status, race or schooling, dogmas that obscure your plan. In our common quest for justice, may we hallow brief life's span. You, Creator God, have written your great name on humankind. For our growing in your likeness, bring the life of Christ to mind, that by our response and service, earth its destiny may find. Amen.